stuff. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we are the children of the God most high, that we are a royal priesthood, that we're sons and daughters of a king who reigns and rules, has dominion over everything. Father, we thank you that we have that peace. We didn't earn that adoption, and so we can't lose it. We stand firm in knowing that it was bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so thank you that we get to say my God in this room as family, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. Help us today in this little family reunion to, to sit and to hear from you, not just to sing and bless you, but to sit under your word. And I pray that you would help, just at this moment, help us be moldable, teachable, that we don't just come and, and sit and audit, that we, we truly today find ourselves formed by the Holy Spirit to look more like the image of your son. We love you, God. We, we take for granted these gifts that you've given us. And so now today, wake us up to the opportunity to be preached to by your messenger, your prophet for the moment, who claims your word. Amen. You can have a seat. Good morning. Hope you're doing well. Hey, uh, just a couple of quick announcements before we introduce our guest to you. Uh, I think this is also a good time for me to throw uh, one idea in front of you as far as the way that we're scheduling guests out uh, in the future and how that's really a, a gift uh, to us in, in this particular moment in, in history. Campus community is tonight. Uh, we're going to be in week two of Citizens. Uh, you don't want to miss tonight's uh, uh, play. It, it, we've been taking um, just honestly uh, with the most downloaded podcast last year and in all of podcasts and, uh, from This American Life. Uh, and we, we basically have hired a couple of actors to play out these two different parts. Part one happened two weeks ago. Then, of course, last Wednesday, uh, we had our one-day revival with Pastor Stephen and Elevation Band. And then tonight, we're picking back up into where we were. It's going to be an amazing study in looking at the kingdom parables and looking at the king of the kingdom, looking at the enemies of the kingdom, looking at uh, a longing for a kingdom, and then the kingdom them parables. And I, I promise you that you are, you're going to walk out of tonight uh, pretty compelled uh, to just want to love the king. We're going to turn our eyes on the king of the kingdom tonight and spend a lot of time just talking about Jesus. And, uh, and, and I can't wait for us to walk out of the room tonight just more in love with Jesus, more wanting to make Jesus known. And, and just, it's going to be a night that's just going to be honestly scattered, covered, and smothered, all right, in, in just Christology. And so be a part of tonight uh, if you can. Um, we uh, had Michelle Williams originally scheduled for today, and we have a scheduling conflict. We can't wait to have her back. She's excited about being able to come back uh, next semester with us. We're already looking to finalize the date on that. Um, and uh, Tim Tebow, by the way, was supposed to be with us this semester. He was supposed to be with us the morning after the Super Bowl, and, uh, uh, and he had to reschedule as well. And, and uh, this is a good time for me, since Michelle uh, is rescheduling with us, to kind of bring up this, this new thing, this new frontier that we've had a chance to be a part of. Uh, when I came here about three years ago, about two or three semest I mean, two or three combos out of a year, out of the 88 combos that we had, would have what I would consider to be a um, household name guest, somebody that uh, doesn't get to go to the mall like you and I get to go to the mall, because they just would get just raided. They doesn't just show up at the airport because they never make their flight with just people just fangirling them to death, you know? And so, a couple of times a year, we would have that level of a guest, somebody who is uh, beyond just famous for a moment. But recently, because God has really raised uh, the, uh, the opportunities that we've had as a university to be a platform of ideas, uh, I think Bernie Sanders said it best when he said, I didn't come to Liberty to speak to, you know, 12,000 college students. He goes, I, I knew most of them weren't even registered in this state to vote. He said, I didn't come to this state, to, uh, to, to this room to speak. He goes, I, he goes, I came here to speak to 2.1 billion Christians because I believe this platform right here, Liberty's Convocation 
population is uh, the, the, the gateway to get the ear of 2.1 billion Christians. And in the last two, two, three years, we've really seen God elevate this stage. It's become that place. And so we no longer have just guests who used to play professional football or guests who used to be, you know, on the cover of Sports Illustrated. All of a sudden, we have very current guests who at this very moment are at the pinnacle, right, uh, of their influence. And with that comes uh, a, a, just a, an another level of um, demand on somebody's schedule. And so uh, Tim Tebow, for example, was is going to be with us, but then the day after the Super Bowl, he's been asked to do some things, and so uh, we love that he gets those opportunities, and he feels enough at home with us to say, hey, can I reschedule for another date? I still want to come. I love Liberty. I had a blast the last time I was there. Uh, you know, I think he's going to find his wife among this room, probably. All right, so can't wait for that to happen, but, but I'm just telling you, uh, on occasion, we're going to move some people around, but that also comes the other way as well, as we announce the schedule to you uh, earlier this semester, right? And we went live with the schedule. Uh, what we didn't have in that moment was something that we were developing but hadn't been confirmed in that Steph Curry is now on the schedule, right? And, and even this morning. Um, and this weekend, we're developing a, a possibility for uh, just something coming up on the schedule of this semester that would require us moving one guest but then grabbing about nine guests that are going to come for one particular combo that I can't confirm to you yet, but we're almost we're in the red zone for it. And when that happens, you'll know, wow, these things aren't on the schedule, and they're amazing that they get to parachute in. And then there are other things that go the other way as well. So I wanted to let you know that, like, as we've really elevated our game. We've got a lot of guests coming in last minute, and then we also will have some guests rescheduling with us last minute. But I love that they feel at home enough to be able to do that and always want to um, see us as a place where they just frequent and, and give us a message. Our special guest today is Pastor Matt Fry. His daughter is a senior here at Liberty. They are highly involved with Liberty's culture and family. Uh, you'll see Pastor Matt all the time, you know, at, at football games. He comes to all kinds of conferences here. He's, he's involved in our church planning network with Liberty. He, uh, he really is no stranger to Liberty University, and I'm just honored that he's going to get to come and open God's Word. Pastor Matt uh, launched his church, C3, in North Carolina a few years ago. It just took off. And and now they have thousands of members, uh, just really impacting not just that state, but the world. They're a very missional church. And um, he also is a leader in the ARC Church Planning Network. That's probably the most influential church planning network right now in, in the world. And he gets to sit at, at that leadership table and just really works on uh, just it's having uh, just church after church after church be planted throughout the world, that, that, and then the kind of churches that they plant are gospel-loving churches that are really changing the world. And so, Pastor Matt's a part of that as well. He has a book that's coming out uh, in, in a couple of months, but you can uh, today receive a free chapter of it, and he's going to give us a, a chance to get that on, uh, on download. It, the, the book is titled, I Am, and uh, obviously you do the math on what that's about. It's about the the great I am, and how we find our identity. And so, uh, without any further ado, can we just welcome Pastor Matt Fry? So honored to have you, brother. How's you going, buddy? Good to see you, David. What's up, Liberty University? You guys doing good this morning? Everybody doing good? Awesome. You guys ready to go? Go ahead and close in prayer. No, I'm just joking. Right here. Hey, uh, I'm a graduate of Liberty. Uh, 1987. Come on, that was a long time ago. I had hair back then, but I had to get it cut when I came to Liberty, right? I had the long hair, but then I had to get it cut. A lot of rules back then that you don't have today, right? Uh, some of you don't know this, but I used, used to have, to have to wear ties to class, right? So I'd wear like a, 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 I was a little bit of a rebel, and I'd wear like these short sleeve polo shirts and put a clip on tie. Right? And you couldn't wear jeans, so I'd wear black jeans. I'm just confessing all my sins that I did at Liberty. And yes, I rang the Liberty bell at 1 o'clock in the morning, and I never got caught. So I'm confessing today. Where's Dr. Mark Hine? I'm confessing. I don't know if I need to get written up later on. But it's great to be at Liberty. Huge respect for the Falwells. Aren't you thankful for Jerry Falwell and Becky Falwell and Jonathan Falwell and Sherry Falwell, the old 
Falwell family. Just want to honor them right now. I am a, a, a living example of the impact of Liberty University. And this is where God moved in my life. This is where God uh, called me to surrender to Him. This is where God called me to ministry. And uh, my life has never been the same. And I just love coming back to Lynchburg, Virginia. Love coming back to Liberty. The last time I spoke, this is my second time in Combo. The last time I spoke, the stage was down there. So that tells you it's been a little while. And so it's good to be back at my alma mater. And I've got, as uh, David mentioned, my daughter Gloria is a senior graduating in May. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. And my son Caleb is uh, 18. He's graduating from Liberty University uh, Academy online. And uh, so, I have two graduating. In fact, all three of my children, check this out, are graduating on the exact same day. So my daughter Caroline goes to Highlands College in Birmingham, Alabama, and she graduates the same day. What's up with that? Can Liberty not coordinate? I called, I tried to call uh, Jerry Falwell to see if he could move the graduation date a day, right? But that didn't, no, that's a joke. All right. So, and here's the challenge. Both of my girls think they're daddy's favorites. And so that's, that's a, so um, Martha and I are going to, my wife Martha's here and she's going to go to Birmingham. I'm going to come to Liberty because this is where I graduated from. Amen? All right. So <laughs> I do want to just recognize I have some C3 church family. Some of our C3 college students are here. You guys stand up. I just want to honor you guys. My wife Martha's here and, and uh, Gloria and, and Caleb and so awesome to have some of the C3 family here. Love you guys. It's going to be a great day. I do have, as David mentioned, a book coming out. And so here's the deal. The book is called I Am, Encounter the One Who Gives You Purpose and Peace in a Crazy World. How many know we live in a crazy world? Right? And so we're going to, the whole book is on, when I have a fresh encounter with the great I Am, that's when I discover who I am. There's a direct connection between having a relationship with the great I am and discovering who I am, and then living out that purpose and that peace in a crazy world. So you can rise above all the craziness around us and live the plan and purpose that God has for your life. So you, today, you can pre-order it, right? Right now, go to EncounterTheGreatIAm.com. Let's take a 30-second break. Go to EncounterTheGreatIAm.com. And you can download one, one chapter for free right now. Go ahead and get one chapter for free. Chapter one, topic, are, are you satisfied? And I share some stories in there about being in school here at Liberty and some other stuff like that throughout the book, and some of that's in chapter one. Go ahead right now and download it. And then next Thursday, you'll get a notice on Thursday of next week, there's going to be all kinds of free stuff on EncounterTheGreatIM.com. Uh, you can get free videos and all kinds of stuff that you're, you're going to get more chapters for free by downloading the book next Thursday. But you can download it right now, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, all that stuff, right? Well, today I want to talk to you about labels. Everybody see labels. How many know in life sometimes labels get put on us? I like this stage. You get to walk around. This is cool. You get exercise and preach at the same time. Y'all doing all right, all right over here? Cool. We get labels put on us, right? We, sometimes we put labels on ourselves. Sometimes other people put labels on us. Maybe it's a coach. Maybe it's a teacher. Maybe it's a leader. Maybe it's a parent. Maybe it's a friend. And sometimes these labels will stick on us, right? So labels are powerful. We're going to talk about labels today. Labels and logos, they, they can say a whole lot about things, can't they? You look at logos. Let's take a look at, at a few logos I brought today. First one, you guys see that? Come on. Any Apple fans in here? Apple fans? What would we do without the iPhone? How about this one? How about Nike? Come on. Where's your shoe game? How about this one? You don't want to see this if you're trying to fast or eat healthy. McDonald's. Hello. When I was a student here in, in, in Lynchburg, you didn't, we didn't have the stuff you guys have now. We had like three restaurants you could go to. Crown Sterling, and you never went there because it was like $100 million. And you had McDonald's, which is obviously where college students went. And then you had Shoney's. Come on. Shoney's big boy. That was it. Now you guys got all kinds of stuff. This, this Lynchburg is just crazy. How about this next one? We got Walt Disney. 
Come on, Mickey Mouse. How about this one? How can we live without this next one? Starbucks. How many of you guys already had your Starbucks this morning? Got to Starbucks. How many want some right now? David, can you run and get some Starbucks for about 10,000 people, right? How about this next one? I thought about David Nasser when I, Ikea, come on. They're building an Ikea in Raleigh. Come on. It's coming. It's coming our way. Where are the Raleigh, North Carolina people at? We're Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, come on, ACC country. How, how about the next one? What's the next one? How about the, uh, the Patriots? The Patriots. All right. Raise your hand if you want the Patriots to win Sunday. Raise your hand. All right. How about the next one? Who, one more. Falcons. Ooh. Looks like the Falcons might have. Okay. One more time. Patriots. Falcons. Patriots, Falcons, and who are, I don't care. <laughs> All right. I think I don't care wins. I think I don't care wins, but after that it was the Falcons. So, so who, let me ask you a question. Who has the right to label something? Who has the right to label something? First of all, number one, if you're the manufacturer. If you manufacture something, you have the right to label it, right? If you look on your shirt, you look on your jacket right now, some of you have a label. And it tells you something, some labels have some, a little bit of, uh, you know, status. Some labels, you know, you're like, I, I try to cover them up, you know, because it's maybe not what others think is cool. When I was in, in uh, high school, this will this will show you how a uh, throwback, how many of you guys, your parents maybe told you about those members only jackets, right? Members only. Come on, when I was in high school, if you're rocking the members only with the penny loafers, I mean, you were, you were it. Now you got Kanye shoes, the Yeezys, you got the shoe game, right? That's a big deal, right? Another, number two is if you're the owner. Everybody say owner. If you own something, then you can label it. You have the right to label it. See, visitors don't label things, owners do. If I were to come to your dorm and I were to start labeling stuff like bed, lamp, roommate, <laughs> closet, that would be weird. You'd be, what are you doing? This is weird. Why? Because I'm a visitor. Visitors don't label things, owners do. And number three, are those who purchase things. When you purchase something, you get a notebook, you get a Bible, you label it, you put your name on it, right? You have the right to label it when you purchase it. Well, I want to tell you today that, that we have one who came and he, he's the one who manufactured us. He's the one who owns us, amen? He's the one who purchased us by his blood on the cross. And we listen to what God says, and we listen to the labels that He gives to us, then that's when we can live out the purpose and plan that God has for our life. And it's okay if you clap. It's okay if you talk back to me. Come on, somebody. It's okay if you help me preach. So three things. Write this down if you're taking notes. I learned how to take notes when I was at Liberty, so if you don't take notes, write these things down. Write these three things down. Number one, God made you. Everybody say, God made you. Look at the person next to you and say, God made you. Ephesians 2.10, for you are God's what? Masterpiece, created by God. Think about that. Let that sink in. You are created by God. You are handcrafted by Him. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Number two, God owns us. Everybody say, God owns us. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? Watch this. You do not belong to yourself. You do not belong to yourself. God owns you. And then number three, God purchased you. Everybody say, God purchased you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, for God brought you out 
I'm sorry, for God bought you. <laughs> That's another scripture. God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. For God bought you. He purchased us. See, labels are powerful. The wrong labels can lock you in and keep opportunity out. The wrong labels can keep you in bondage and can he keep you from living God's plan for your life. But the right labels, the labels that we get from our Heavenly Father can allow us to live the destiny and the plan and to make a difference with our life and to become a world changer for Him. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to hear His labels. But some of you heard labels from your parents, from a coach, from a teacher, from a friend. Worst of all, we hear labels from the devil. And he fills our mind with these horrible thoughts and negative thoughts of, of who we are. Maybe when you're younger, you were abused, or maybe when you're younger, somebody said, you're, you're not good enough, or you'll never be like your brother, or you'll never be like your sister, or can't you do any better than that? And those labels, those thoughts have stuck with you throughout the years. And you're here at Liberty, and sometimes those labels, you can even take them into college and beyond, and those labels are still there, and they're imprinted on you. Now, there's hope. We can get those labels off. God can set you free. I have a few labels when I was in second grade. How many you know when you're younger, sometimes things leave a mark? I'll never forget, I thought I was a pretty smart kid. You know, my mama told me I was smart. Hello. Second grade, they're putting everybody in reading groups, and I get put in the middle reading group. I'm like average. So I, got, I felt this label like, I'm just average. I'm not really smart. Kind of carried that throughout life at times. When I was a freshman, I re actually wrestled here at Liberty University. That's the reason why I came in the first place. Where's the wrestling team? Come on. Congratulations, second in the nationals in duels. I declare a national championship. Amen. In the uh, individuals. Come on. You got to cheer on each other, right? Got to cheer on the wrestling team. Yeah. And the basketball team won last night. Congratulations to the basketball And the women's basketball team won last night. It's a great night for Liberty University. But when I was a freshman, I started wrestling when I was nine years old. And when I was a freshman in high school, I was the first ever freshman from my school to not only wrestle varsity, but went to the state tournament. And I was in the state tournament. I'm a freshman. I'm wrestling this other kid who's really good from around the state. And... He went into overtime, and he beat me by one point in overtime, and now my season has ended. I didn't place in the state, which was my goal, and I remember sitting down on the floor, and I'm sure my coach meant well, but I'm sitting there, I'm exhausted, I gave it my all, and he came over and started yelling at me, he said, you didn't want it bad enough, you didn't want it bad enough, Fry, you didn't want it bad enough. I remember just sitting there going, just feeling this label being put on me. I'm a quitter. And I'm sure he didn't mean it, but in my mind, that left a mark on me. Then I was in high school. Had a friend who physically abused me. And I felt shame. I didn't talk about it, but I felt shame. Then I came to Liberty, and this is not a bad label, but it was my identity, and it was a wrestler. And so I kind of went throughout life as like, that's my identity. My identity is shame. My identity is I'm a quitter. My identity is average. My identity is a wrestler. But we can overcome these labels, and with God's help. I've been able to overcome these labels and hear the labels and hear what God says about me and find my identity in Him. The three guys in the Bible, you might know the story, but you might not recognize these three guys' names. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. How many of you guys have heard of them? Also known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were their Hebrew names, but the Babylonians renamed them. They put a different label on them. You know what they meant? Shadrach meant command of a coup, which was the god of the moon. Meshach meant who was what a coup is, which is, which meant who is god of the moon. Abednego means servant of Nebo. You know what Nebo was? It was a Babylonian god of wisdom. They weren't labels that God had for them. They were labels 
that the Babylonians put on them. They were young leaders that King Nebuchadnezzar thought highly of. And of course, you know the story, King Nebuchadnezzar builds an idol, 90 feet tall, and says, bow down to this idol. Of course, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're not going to bow down. I love what it says in Daniel 3, verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. Verse 18, but even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. I love that passion. I love that fire. Make that your decision right now. I'm not going to bow down to popularity. I'm not going to bow down to drugs. I'm not going to bow down to try to fit in. I'm not going to bow down to the things of this world, but I'm going to have the character. I'm going to have the integrity to stand for God, to have a faith in God that He can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So they got thrown into the fire. They heated it seven times. And if you know the story, they didn't get, they, they didn't even smell like smoke. But in the fire, I want you to see what their Hebrew names were. Hananiah means, I am answered by the Lord. Mishael means, I am a man who is like God. And Azariah means, I am helped by God. I wonder if they're in the fire and they're, they're take, they've taken off the labels of Shadrach, Meshach, and we're not the God of the moon. We're not, we don't worship him. Instead, Hananiah declares, I am answered by the Lord. Mishael declares, I am a man who is like God. Azariah declares, I am helped by God. And they looked in there and they said, didn't we put three men in there? But there's a fourth. Why? Because God was with them and God was for them. You might be here right now and you're going through a fire, you're going through a challenge. I just want to declare over you right now that God is with you and God is for you. Even in the fire, even through the challenge, even through the difficulty. God is with you, and He is for you. See, they never forgot their identity. And God doesn't want you to forget your identity. Discover and declare who God says you are. When I came to Liberty in 1983 and recruited by the the wrestling team and came here, and at that time, sports was my God. That's all I knew. I just... I had no direction in my life. I just came here because I thought it was a cool school, and they, and they had a, offered me a wrestling scholarship. So I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot. So I came here, but God brought me, wrestling brought me here, but when, once I got here, that's when God got a hold of my life. As a freshman at Liberty University, this is where I surrendered my life to Him. I was in Dr. Gary Habermas's philosophy class, who's a legend. Look him up on Wikipedia. And that's where God spoke to me. And I I realized who God is and what He said He did, He really did do. He did die on the cross and rise from the grave. I just surrendered my life completely to Him. Soon after that, I started working with middle school students at Thomas Road, and then one thing after another. And you know what's amazing is all those negative things, shame, average, quitter, even wrestler. God has used for His glory. God delivered me from the shame, and guess what else? Guess what happened? Now I lead a a men's connect group and helping them be set free from shame. You realize how many people have been abused sexually as a child, as a teenager, or just abused physically, or just neglected, and and I have the privilege now of taking that shame the devil thought it was going to tear me down, and now I'm able to use that for His glory. Take, take wrestling. After I surrendered my life to God, then I began to help coach wrestling. I would volunteer at different high schools as a youth minister, and I saw captains of the wrestling team get saved, and, and other wrestlers get saved. And the very thing, the devil wanted me to find my identity in what I did, but when I found my identity in who I am in Christ, then I was able to take the very thing the devil was trying to f- use to me to find my identity in and use it for his glory, and now kids are getting saved and lives have been changed. That's what God does. So I want, let's declare 
what God says about you. Rather than listening to the lies of the devil, let's declare the promises of God. Discover the promises and declare the promises. Everybody say, discover the promise. Everybody say, declare the promise. There's been many times, even in recent years, where I kind of felt like I was up against a, a brick wall, like there was no hope. And I would take the promises that are in God's Word, and I would begin declaring those promises. My wife Martha and I would declare those promises together, and we would see God do supernatural things, things that don't make sense, because when we declare the promises of God, we see what God can do. When we declare our own lies that, and we repeat them back to us that the devil has filled with us, filled our mind with, it's only going to take us farther back. It's only going to keep us in bondage. But when we declare the promises of God, when we declare what God says about us, that's when we can live the purpose and plan that He has for us. And that's my prayer for you today here at Liberty University, that you would dive into the Word of God. What are the promises that we see? And then live them out. In my book, I share 31 I Am Declarations. And I encourage everyone to take one declaration every day and declare that declaration over their life. And I'm going to read those 31 declarations over you. And as I read them, I'm not just reading them, I'm declaring them over you. You might want to grab a hold of one or two of these declarations and say, that's my declaration. I'm going to, declare, I'm going to receive that declaration and I'm going to declare it myself over my life. And when we get done, we're all going to celebrate and give God thanks for what He says about us. Here's God's declaration for you. He says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made by a holy God. I am God's masterpiece. I am made in the image of God. I am forgiven. I am redeemed by God. I am called by name. I am a new creation. I am greatly loved by God. I am His child. I am an heir of God and co-heir with Christ. I am a member of God's family. I am blessed in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing. I am chosen to be a part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation set apart for God. I am His treasured possession. I am precious to God. I am a temple of the living God. I am full and complete, lacking nothing. I am the righteousness of God. I am His ambassador. I am free. I am healed. I am whole. I am more than a conqueror. I am a warrior for Christ. I am wanted. I am significant. I am a citizen of God's kingdom. I am sent by God. I am light in the darkness. I am a friend of God, chosen by Him, and appointed to bear good fruit. I am His radiant bride, without spot or wrinkle. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody shout it. Come on, can we give God praise? Come on, can we celebrate? He's an awesome God. He declares it over you. Your greatest days are ahead. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. I'm more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When well, I declare that over everyone here today, lift up your hands. I declare this over every student today, God, even those who are watching online, Lord, that they would be re the labels that the world has put on them, the labels that the devil has put on them, God, they will be removed right now in Jesus' name, and they will live out the purpose and plan that you have for them. I declare this in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. God bless you guys.